Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon, held Monday, November 21st at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring this year's recipient, award-winning journalist and CBS Evening News anchor, Scott Pelley. The annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. For veterans, coming back to civilian life brings new challenges, new opportunities, and new stories of remarkable courage and accomplishment. Veterans Coming Home connects veterans and their families to resources and services for a successful transition to civilian life. Explore some of the best resources and opportunities for veterans at azpbs.org slash veterans. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. PBS presents the 2016 Hispanic Heritage Awards. This year's honorees include Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the Fania All-Stars, Angelica Maria, and many more. The 29th Hispanic Heritage Awards. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... Deanne Griebel, now with Moores and Cabot Investments, serving investors since 1890, proudly supports quality programming on 8 Arizona PBS, 480-725-9602. Friendship Village Tempe, a retirement community for over 30 years, offers independent living with residency options, lifelong learning classes, as well as continuing care. Information at friendshipvillageaz.com. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Another contest between Maricopa County Sheriff candidates. Paul Penzone and Joe Arpaio face off over a political attack ad. The political news cycle has changed drastically since Walter Cronkite sat at the anchor desk. A look at the future of public policy journalism on Cronkite's 100th birthday. Plus, house hunting from your couch. Virtual <laughs> reality is giving you a whole new way to scope out your next home. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Danielle Kernkamp. And I'm Veronica Acosta. Thank you for joining us. The race for Maricopa County Sheriff is now facing new legal action. Cronkite News reporter Alexis Stukrath attended today's news conferences held by Democratic candidate Paul Penzone and Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Paul Penzone filed a lawsuit today against Sheriff Joe Arpaio. The lawsuit surrounds attack ads that began running on Monday, describing Penzone's marital issues. Penzone is suing for defamation. And he doesn't even have the courage to stand next to me and make the attacks. He uses money from around the country to do ad buy so that he can't be held accountable. Whereas I will stand here and answer to it. And I will tell you, people say, why would you do this, Paul, knowing that he'll lie again? Why would you do it? Why go through this? because he does it. The attack ad airing this election season bars similarities to the one that aired back in 2012. It alleges Penzone assaulted his ex-wife in 2003. Penzone addressed this issue back in 2012 when the first attack ad surfaced. His ex-wife provided an affidavit saying that the ad was misleading and inaccurate. Penzone previously threatened a lawsuit if the ad showed up again. Members of the re-elect Sheriff Joe Arpaio campaign held their own news conference this afternoon to respond. The Arpaio campaign went to great lengths to ensure that its uh, advertisement was going to be accurate. He reviewed the public records, it had uh, lawyers look at, the re look at the advertisement before it ran, and we actually sent a letter to Penzone's own attorneys before the ad went up on the air to ask them to identify inaccuracies in the 2012 ad. Penzone has launched the website shamelessjoe.com in response to these attack ads, and a TV ad pushing back on Arpaio is in the works. But voters will have the final say in November. In the Broadcast Center, Alexis Stukraft, Cronkite News. Arpaio has raised $725,000 over the past month, totaling his campaign contributions this election cycle to $12 million. The sheriff is seeking his seventh term, and most of Arpaio's campaign money comes from donors living in other states. Previous reports say Penzone has raised $326,000 total, and he faces a deadline today for filing an updated report. 
Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump is returning to Arizona next week. Trump is expected to appear at a rally on Tuesday in Prescott Valley, his sixth visit into the state. This trip would tie George W. Bush for the most number of campaign stops by a candidate in a state since at least 1996. Trump attacked Google at a rally in Wisconsin today, claiming the search engine company suppresses negative headlines about his opponent. The Google poll has us leading Hillary Clinton by two points nationwide. And that's despite the fact that Google's search engine was suppressing the bad news about Hillary Clinton. Google says its algorithms won't display a predicted search if it's offensive or disparaging when displayed with a person's name. Meanwhile, Clinton and her campaign were at a rally in Des Moines, Iowa. She spoke about the potential flooding in Cedar Rapids and says her campaign, along with thousands of people, came out and helped lay sandbags to try and prevent flooding. And I told them that if I'm so fortunate enough as to be president, we're going to have a big infrastructure program and we're going to help prevent flooding in places like Cedar Rapids. Clinton says she spoke with the Cedar Rapids mayor and city council members in the past couple of days, who say they have taken a lot of good precautionary measures. With social media, 24-hour news cycles, carefully scripted messaging, coverage of presidential campaigns has been a lot different in the last few years. Imagine how much more it's changed in the 100 years since Walter Cronkite was born. Cronkite News reporter Claire Caulfield is in Washington where she asked that question today at an event marking the centennial of Cronkite's birth. I'm here at the Newseum in Washington, D.C. for the celebration of Walter Cronkite's 100th birthday. According to the experts we spoke to, a lot has changed since the most trusted man in America sat behind an anchor's desk. Back when Cronkite was at his height, his most his popularity there are only three networks you know now there are four networks and cable outlets and you know news is broadcast over so many different platforms now and that's not even including facebook twitter and all the other social media platforms social media has played a huge role in the current election season candidates are communicating directly to voters online and reporters are able to track mentions and topics by the second I think political journalism is definitely switching more towards social media and Twitter and definitely all those outlets because it's just easier for people to get. Voters now know more about their candidates than ever before and have plenty of options when choosing where to get their news. What I think is, is dangerous is that um, people go to the ones that they subscribe to and they're not getting a variety of opinions. Uh. Museum attendees agreed that the tone of journalism has changed since Cronkite's days. I think the country is so uh, politically polarized that I don't know if it's because of journalism or if journalism has become polarized because of the, the, mood, the mood in the country. Um, I think political journalism will like, I feel like it can be biased at times and it's just like all about finding the right station and like the right, you know, the right news source and it kind of just like depends on who you rely on for your news. Good evening from our CBS newsroom in New York. But everyone we spoke to said journalists like Cronkite still play a vital role. You need to be able to find a way to get that information that's also been properly vetted and investigated um, to find that reason in the coverage. And that's something that journalists need to provide now more than ever. In Washington, D.C., Claire Caulfield, Cronkite News. New data released by the U.S. Census Bureau is showing significant economic growth by American families. It highlights the largest one-year drop in the overall poverty rate since 1968. President Barack Obama is pushing Congress to further strengthen job creation and wage growth, asking to increase investments in infrastructure and raise the federal minimum wage. Arizona saw rises in its medium household income rates, elevating 2.7 percent compared to the national increase of 5.2 percent. Prescott and Lake Havasu City saw the fastest gains in the state, with typical household incomes rising around 8.5 percent. A new report by the National Council of La Raza said that the number of Latino youth behind bars has declined over the past 10 years, but the rate remains high in Arizona. The wide-ranging report presents a picture of mixed progress for Latino youth in a number of categories. While jail populations are down, for example, states with large Latino youth populations like Arizona and California
still face problems with obesity and cultural struggles. The report came with a new data explorer. Experts say this makes it easy for regular people to look at the issues as well as policymakers and researchers. It is really important uh, to have numbers at hand to make the point that we can raise funds so that we can provide the services for Latino children and the Latino community. Community-based organizations are struggling, but they're the epicenter of where change is, is really happening for Latino children. Advocates say the report comes at a critical time with the nation preparing to elect a new president and Congress. They say incoming policymakers will be able to understand the needs and potential of Hispanic children. A five-year-old in Avondale was killed yesterday after he accidentally shot himself with a gun he found in a bedroom. More than two million children live in homes with guns that aren't stored in a proper, secure place, according to a study done by Everytown Research. So far in 2016, there have been at least 196 child shootings in the United States four of those in Arizona. The study also cited that 61% of shootings involving a child occur in the victim's home, and 70% of people said that this could have been preventable if there had been responsible storage for the weapon. In the U.S., 27 states, along with D.C., have enacted some form of child access prevention law. However, Arizona remains without any kind of law that would impose criminal liability if a child were to get their hands on a gun. Back in July, Congressman Ruben Gallego introduced the HARD Act in an effort to keep military-style weapons out of the hands of children under the age of 16. However, no further action has been taken. Along with not having a child access prevention law, Arizona also doesn't currently have any form of safe storage or gun law requirement or an assault weapons ban. Edgar Castro, the 19-year-old who was forced to eat a gram of marijuana by Phoenix police officers earlier this month, spoke at a Phoenix City Hall today. Castro said there is one thing he would like to see happen with the police department. I would like them to be more responsible and hire more responsible police officers. And a lot of stuff are going to come up with this, with this case and their information is still ongoing. Conference with Reverend Jared Maupin, who said there needs to be better diversity training for officers. Castro is asking for a public apology from city leaders as well as compensation for the violation of his civil rights. The three police officers involved resigned and one lieutenant was demoted. Sushi that's deep fried? Mexican restaurants do their roles a little bit differently. Coming up on Cronkite News, how the first Mexican sushi restaurant in the Valley is affecting the way Latinos dine. Plus, if you're looking for a new home, new technology may allow you to do so without leaving your couch. Five terms in the Senate, three terms in the House, two figureheads of Arizona politics, one debate before Election Day. Arizona PBS and the Arizona Republic bring you the 2016 U.S. Senate debate for the state of Arizona. Republican Senator John McCain and Democratic Representative Ann Kirkpatrick face-to-face -face on the future of our state, our nation, our world. McCain versus Kirkpatrick, the 2016 U.S. Senate debate for the state of Arizona, Monday, October 10th at 7 p.m. here on Arizona PBS. More than 800 Syrian refugees now call Arizona home. Over the past year, only three states brought in more Syrians than Arizona. The new numbers come as President Obama says the nation will accept over 100,000 total refugees within the next year. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey was one of 30 governors who called for a stop to Syrian refugees due to the threat of terrorism. Meanwhile, some Valley companies are using refugee programs to help fill a skilled labor shortage. Cronkite News reporter Jesse Canales found out how one refugee is helping to supply the Valley with electricity. Imad Efran left his home country of Iraq with his wife seeking a better life in the United States through the International Rescue Program. There's a lot of terrorism there. The wall, I can't live there. Afram was an electrician in Iraq for eight years, but when he arrived in Phoenix, he almost ended up with a new career. Housekeeping at hotels, but two days or three later, they give me this job through the agency, IRC. That job was an electrician at Austin Electric Services. Troy Barbush is the program's director of training and development. The program teaches people how to become an electrician through two phases. We've partnered up with the Home Builders Association. We've utilized a lot of the uh, refugee 
uh, agencies here in the Valley, and we've also partnered up with uh, the DOC. There are currently 38 people in the program and eight graduates. Trainees learn in the field. They can also become a supervisor through the program, which is what Afram is doing, and instruct other trainees. The program was originally meant for millennials, but supervisors say they weren't that eager for the job. This is a lot of hard work. This is a hard work, good money. The younger generation just doesn't want to work as hard. That is where willing workers like Afram, who also had the experience, come in and fill those much needed positions. In Phoenix, Jesse Canales, Cronkite News. When you look for a new home, you may find yourself driving around neighborhoods looking for open houses, but all of that could soon become a thing of the past. Cronkite News reporter Zach Moran shows us how new technology is expected to change the real estate business. Imagine being able to virtually tour an entire property without having to leave your couch. One Valley real estate firm is making that possible, and they say they're the first in the Valley to do it. Inside this Peoria real estate brokerage, real estate meets virtual reality. The first time I seen a video was about six months ago. And as soon as I seen it, I, I, again, it just instantaneously, I knew that this would translate to real estate extremely well. Deluxe Realty CEO Daniel McCarthy is introducing these virtual reality stations, letting clients get the experience of touring a home, all without taking a single step on the property. You're talking about literally taking homes and creating an atmosphere where people can tour them comfortably on a headset from their home and I think it's going to change the way people view homes. It only requires 360 video, a smartphone and a VR headset. From there you're transported to another place, either down the street or even around the world. Oh wow. And at this open house some industry professionals got their first taste of just that. It's just very unique to all the different perspectives. Um, and the fact that you can, without even moving, walk through the whole house. So, I mean, it's just a very different way. I felt like I was in a different place. There is just a huge opportunity for uh, this to be the next big thing in real estate. We've been waiting for some time. And McCarthy agrees. He's confident that the technology will one day be an everyday tool in the real estate industry. When that day will come is uncertain, but for now, he's ahead of the curve. It's definitely gonna be impacted. People are definitely gonna be looking at homes much differently. They're gonna experience homes much differently before they actually physically go to the home. Uh, they're, they're gonna see this, this technology in use. The company expects that 75% of its property listings will be virtual reality capable within the next six months. In the broadcast center, Zach Moran, Cronkite News. A 2,500 year old water sport is making waves in Tempe. And the Dragon Boat Racing Group is focusing on paddling to help their health. Coming up on Cronkite News, an Asian sports tradition is catching attention from people of all cultures this weekend in Tempe. This morning, we're seeing clearing skies across the valley. Will that trend continue into the weekend? I have your full forecast coming up next. Come and play with us. Onward and ideas open up a whole new world of possibilities. The more you know about history, the more you know about yourself. The sky is the limit. From the rivers in China to the banks of Tempe Town Lake, dragon boat racing is a growing sport in the valley, and reporter Anthony Marroquin took a look at an upcoming race to see what all the hype is about. We're friends. We're friends, and it's great. Trisha, Carol, and Donna have been friends for over four years. As breast cancer survivors, they formed a support group to help other women in similar situations. But this isn't your typical support group. We're paddlers. The three are part of the Abreast in the West Dragon Boat Racing Team. They say paddling helps them prevent complications that many breast cancer survivors have to deal with, like swelling of the arms and legs caused by lymphedema. And that's paddling, not rowing. Rowing, you go backwards. <laughs> paddling, you are always moving forwards. We continue to move forward. Just 13 years ago, dragon boat racing was all but non-existent in the Phoenix metro area. Now, it's attracting people of all ages and walks of life looking to scale up their hobbies. The festival itself started with only 20 teams, and now we have over 80 teams. 
the Arizona Dragon Boat Association held its first festival in 2003. It started with just a niche community and six boats shipped directly from China. Now it has 16. Many teams at the festival are made up of novice racers from the community looking to build new relationships while having fun. Even though we're competing during the Dragon Boat races, we're actually a very tight-knit community. But for Abreast in the West, this is more than just a bonding and celebratory event. It's about reminding each other that they are not alone in their fight. And if one paddler gets tired or weak or needs to pull their paddle in for any reason, you've got 19 sisters in the boat that are going to carry you through that rough patch. Proving that the strength in numbers is that you are one. In Tempe, Anthony Marroquin, Cronkite News. The festival is this weekend at Tempe Town Lake and proceeds will go to Arizona Disabled Sports and Breast Cancer Awareness. A boat ride sounds nice, as long as the weather holds out. Tyler Klaus is in the Weather Center with our forecast. As you can see, temperatures across the state are looking pretty good. The farther southwest you go, the warmer you get. We have 96 degrees in Yuma, 92 degrees in Phoenix, 64 up in the Grand Canyon, and that's because we have some showers that are trying to work their way north. Over the past couple hours, as you can see, they rolled through finger, uh, Phoenix. Now they're headed up to the north part of the state. You can really see this uh, drying trend trying to work its way into the valley. And as we work over the next couple hours, that drying trend will continue. Here we are tomorrow morning as you head out the door. Really no clouds anywhere in the state except way up near Flagstaff as we continue through the rest of the day on on Friday, you have some spot showers across the northern mountains, classic monsoon activity. The last official day for the monsoon is actually tomorrow. As we work our way through Friday and into Saturday, as you can see, we really dry out across the state. Tomorrow afternoon, really no monsoon moisture anywhere in the state. As we take a look at your temperatures for the rest of the day, 6 p.m., 91 degrees with partly cloudy skies, 85 degrees at 9 p.m. Waking up tomorrow, it's going to be a little chilly with 76 degrees and sunny skies. As we take a look at high temperatures for tomorrow, we're going to see 94 degrees here and Phoenix, 68 degrees up in the Grand Canyon and 88 degrees tomorrow in Tucson for a high temperature. Taking a look at your seven day forecast, 10% chance of rain still tomorrow lingering around. On Saturday, 95 degrees with sunny skies and again, 93 degrees on Sunday with sunny skies. As we take a look at the rest of the week, it stays cooler. It actually gets cooler on Monday, 85 degrees and 83 degrees on Tuesday. Tyler Klaus, Cronkite Weather. The Valley is home to a lot of food from around the world, including fusion restaurants that combine cuisine and culture. A new report by the Arizona Hispanic Chamber of Commerce shows Latinos spend more per capita than other groups eating out. And that influences the kind of restaurants we're seeing here in Phoenix. Cronkite News reporter Yami Flores sunk her teeth into the world of Mexican sushi. This is one of many restaurants in Phoenix that serves Mexican sushi. The rolls are a fusion between Mexican and Japanese ingredients. You need a rice maker, you need seaweed, you need a uh, fish, you need shrimp, you need uh, uh, cheese. The idea originally started in Mexico. Hernan Rivera Jr. and his father were the first to bring it to Phoenix. Mexican sushi basically is more spices, more steak, more chicken and it's fully cooked and it's deep fried. Sushi Sonora opened a second restaurant in March. Most of our target marketing is for the people that don't eat raw fish. Most of their customers are Hispanic and would much rather have cooked sushi. We do like the traditional one, but fried is our favorite. During the week they get a lot of to-go orders, but it's on the weekend when people wait up to an hour to try their most common dishes, such as Cielo Mar y Tierra. The recipe is a combination of steak, chicken, shrimp with avocado, and cream cheese. And sushi. <laughs> this it's customer's okay. favorite sushi is the deep fried shrimp. The appetite for Mexican sushi is growing. The Riveras now face competition from at least nine similar restaurants. In Phoenix, Jamie Flores, Cronkai News. The Summer Olympics in Rio are long past us. But for one Tempe native, he will always be considered a hero at his high school. Coming up on Cronkite News, how Tempe is celebrating their silver medal winning Olympian. The confidence to lead our country. This isn't reality television. I feel like Hamilton reached out from history and wouldn't let me go until I told his story. I make no apology for my actions. I would do the same again. How we come so far and yet have so far to go. Right 
In 1920s Melbourne. Be careful with the hand luggage. My pistol's in there somewhere and it may still be loaded. Phryne Fisher is a detective. Things could get interesting around here. Thought they already were. Who isn't afraid to live a little. I hope you're not concealing a dangerous weapon under that skirt. I'm concealing a lot of things. Why do you think you could just run off on your own? Because I'm carrying a gun. The irresistible series, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Saturday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. President Obama welcomed Team USA Olympians to the White House today. Members of the 2016 Olympic and Paralympic teams were honored by the president. President Obama spoke to some of the accomplishments of the teams, notably Simone Biles. He also made it a point to say how the female athletes owned Rio. The president was presented with a surfboard signed by the teams. Also at the White House, synchronized diving silver medalist Sam Dorman. That visit is part of a whirlwind for the Valley native since returning from Rio. Last week, he paid a visit to his high school in Tempe. Reporter Christina Vicario was at Dorman's alma mater's homecoming pep rally. 25-year-old Olympic diver Sam Dorman brought his silver medal in men's synchronized diving to the pep rally of his alma mater, Marcos Denisa High School, in Tempe Friday, but wasn't expecting what was waiting for him. I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew the, the pep rallies were insane, just like they were back in the day, but I, I didn't expect it to be like this. I mean, to come back and see them chant my name, I never thought that would be happening. Dorman is now a role model not only for the students at his high school, but also for the city. He knew what his goals were. He knew that he had to have that rigor and, and that grit in his life, and he brought it back, and he's a great representative. That's exactly what I would want for our role models here at Marcos. Just to have someone from Marcos go and do something crazy in the Olympics and win a silver medal, like just representing Tempe, Arizona in a worldwide event, was that was awesome. While Dorman's Olympic final came during school hours, that didn't stop students here at Marcos Denisa High School from watching their alumnus. Teachers paused their school schedules for the day to let their students watch the event live in their classrooms. My honors physics teacher used to coach Sam here. She used to be his diving coach, so she shut down all of her classes so we could watch Sam dive, and it was so fun. a little bit emotional when they were chanting. Um, when they played the Star Spangled Banner, I got a little bit teary. So yeah, it, it was fun, it was exciting, and I was proud. I won't forget this, I won't ever forget this. this is, it's amazing. In Tempe, I'm Christina Vicario, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll feature a documentary on Saudi Arabian farming near Yuma and then discuss how that farming is raising water issues in the area. That's on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Gwen Eiffel on the next News Hour, a report from Afghanistan on how the lives of women have changed after years of war. That's Thursday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Coming up on Arizona Collectibles. Oh, you're kidding me. I, I, I think it's oh, at night, nice. yes. Really? Wow. Is that all? Is that all? <laughs> well, that sounds good. <laughs> but it was really nice that he gave yeah. this to me, and it's something I really treasure. Uh, Barry Goldwater, someone who means a mm -hmm. lot to me. These are probably mid-19th century, so I would put these somewhere around 1850, 1860. Tonight at 7.30 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon, held Monday, November 21st at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring this year's recipient 
award-winning journalist and CBS Evening News anchor Scott Pelley. The annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Get the inside scoop on what's happening at Arizona PBS. Become an insider. You'll receive weekly updates on the most anticipated upcoming programs and events. Get the insider delivered to your email inbox. Visit azpbs.org to sign up today. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. Hi, I'm Ted Simons. Debate season is here. Watch national coverage of the vice presidential debate on the PBS NewsHour at 6. Then join me at 8 for a special edition of Arizona Horizon to find out the key takeaways for our state. This election season will help you find more meaning by presenting the issues that matter to you closer to home. Don't miss Arizona Horizon's 2016 debate special. Tuesday night at 8 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona.